Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial video on our channel. In this one we are going to be talking about the service discovery. Specifically we are going to be talking about Netflix Eureka service discovery. As you may know a service discovery is a process by which components in a distributed system can discover and communicate with each other. Uh, Netflix Eureka is a service registry that helps microservices find and communicate with each other in a distributed system and in a microservices architecture applications are composed of a multiple small independent services that interact with each other to provide the overall functionality of the application and Eureka maintains a directory of available services in their network location so like something like IP address and a port and it makes it easier uh, for these services to communicate and to discover basically each other. Um, each service there should register itself uh, with Eureka on a startup and then Eureka will periodically send uh, heartbeats to check on if that service is still available. By using Eureka for uh, service discovery, microservices can dynamically discover and communicate with each other without the need of a central centralized configuration or a hard-coded address. Uh, this makes it easier to scale, update and uh, maintain microservice uh, applications. So in this video we're going to have a look and um, see how we can easily set this up. Um, so you might see here that I have um, my project um, prepared. I still haven't added any code. That's what we're going to be doing now. So let's uh, let's have a look um, what I have so far. The important thing here um, is this build Gradle file, um, which um, basically gives me all of my dependencies that I need. So um, here you can see that I applied some plugins. So we're using Spring Boot, of course, and uh, of course for our dependency management we're using Gradle. Um, you can see that I'm applying. Um, some repositories for all of our projects and I'm also applying some stuff for our sub projects so like these plugins that we have here and also this dependency management where we have the uh, Spring Cloud dependencies. The Netflix Eureka dependencies we are going to be adding to the modules or to the sub modules. So speaking about those modules, let's have a look at what we have there. You can see here I have this uh, modules directory and if we open it up, uh, you can see that I have a couple of sub modules. I have this service discovery server, which will be our service discovery. And then I have uh, two microservices. Uh, so I have two uh, directories for our microservices, one being a user service and the other one being a calculation service. So what we are going to try to implement is a simple example where a user service provides some endpoint which this calculation service can access and get a list of users and then do something with them. And we're going to be using this service discovery server to be able to, uh, so for these two services to be able to communicate with each other and uh, find each other. Uh, other important thing that we have is in our settings Gradle um, where we have the, the root project name and we also have our includes. So we, we are including the uh, modules that I just mentioned so that uh, Gradle can discover them. Okay, uh, first things first, uh, let's start with the service discovery server. So let's try to build this up. Uh, let's open this build Gradle file that we have here. So within this directory, I have a, an empty build Gradle file. And now I'm going to add the dependencies that I need for the server. So let me add this and then uh, we'll talk about what we have there. Okay, and here it is. Again, we have some plugins uh, and we have our dependencies. In this case, we only have one dependency and this is to the Spring Cloud Starter, so the Netflix Eureka server. So this is a service module and that's uh, where we're going to be uh, using the server dependency. Uh, let me create then some other directories. Let me create our uh, Java directory and within it, uh, let's create Oops, um, with, so within the Java directory, uh, let's create a new package. Um, make sure that uh, this package that you created here matches the one in the build Gradle file that's uh, defined, so this group. Um, okay, now that we have our package, we can start to add um, our code. The first thing is um, our service application class, so a class that will enable us to start this server, so let's do that. And here it is. So we have our server application class, uh, which enables us to start the Eureka server. And as you can see, the most important uh, annotation here for Eureka is this one to enable Eureka server. Okay, 
Uh, the next step is to actually add some uh, properties for applications. So um, uh, let's create the, the resource directory. Um, so we're going to go to um, actually main, uh, new, and then new directory, and then the resources. And within this one, we're going to create our application properties file. Okay, now we have created our application properties file. Uh, let me add some properties there and then uh, we'll go through them and explain what they are. And here they are. So we have a couple of properties here. Uh, one is this service URL, basically a URL which will be uh, used by other services. So our uh, microservices here uh, to be able to find the server so to, to register itself. And we also have a port in which this uh, will start. And then uh, we also say um, that we don't want this server to uh, register itself with Eureka. Okay, um, basically that will be it for the server. It's actually quite simple. Um, we can now start it and open up this URL we mentioned and uh, see uh, what we have there. So let me do that really fast. And here we are. As you can see, uh, we are running on localhost 8761. So this is the port we defined. We have started our server and uh, here uh, Eureka offers us with some uh, dashboard. As you can see uh, in this uh, instances that are currently registered with Eureka, we don't have anything because we didn't register anything, we didn't create anything, uh, but this is where our services would be listed. Um, yeah, um, so for now, for server, that's it. We don't have to do anything else. Uh, the next thing would be to actually implement our um, microservices, so our services that would register with Eureka. So let's do that. Let's switch back to IntelliJ. Okay, now that we are back in IntelliJ, we can uh, close this one, close this one. The next step would be again uh, to create our uh, Java directory, then create some um, new package, name it same as before. Uh, you can of course name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. And then let's create our uh, user service uh, application class. Now that we have our uh, user service application class, the next thing we want to do is actually add the dependencies because we don't have anything here. So let's add the dependencies that we need for our uh, client here. And here we are. We actually don't have to do uh, what we did here. We don't have to apply these plugins because uh, we are already applying it uh, via this uh, uh, sub project so we are applying everything uh, to our sub project so we don't have to do it individually so what i have here for the dependencies of the the user service is i have the spring boot starter web which would enable us to add some endpoints and i also have the spring boot cloud uh, so spring cloud starter netflix eureka client so this is the difference with this is the client and in our server we had the server dependency so now this uh microservice here that we are creating is going to be one of the, the clients that's going to register itself with the server. So let's see what we can add to this uh, class here and then let's go through it. And here we are. So um, same as before, we have our Spring Boot application uh, annotation as always, because this is a Spring Boot application. And now we have a different annotation than before. Now we have enable discovery client. So this is important. This will enable us to register with the server among the other things. Next step, uh, let's create our resource folder. Uh, again, uh, main, new, directory, and then resources. And within resources, let's create our application properties file. So now that we have our application properties, we need to add some properties here. One would be the server name and so the application name and the other one would be uh, the URL on where this application can find the uh, service discovery server. So let's add that really fast. And here it is. So Spring application name is user service as we are building our user service here. And we have Eureka client service URL, um, which is defined in the um, if you go to the server, uh, to its resources, to application properties, you, you have to find this URL here, so it must match. Um, so this will enable our user service to find the server itself and register itself with it. Um, okay, let's now start our application and uh, see if it gets registered. And I was wrong, uh, we did need these plugins uh, here, otherwise our application will not start. So please add them to the um, uh, user service build gradle file. Now let's check if our service has been uh, discovered by the service discovery. 
And here we are back at our um, dashboard and you can see that we have our user service registered here uh, and we have some uh, information about it. So far so good. We have been able to register one of the services. Now we're going to build a second one and register it also. So let's go back to IntelliJ and see how we can do that. Okay, now that we are back in IntelliJ, we are going to basically just copy the entire thing. So we can just copy the source folder and paste in our calculation service and then uh, the build gradle file from our uh, user service we're going to copy that and also uh, paste it here return, return our calculation service and then uh, we have to go to the resources uh, we're going to rename this um, to calculation service eureka url stays the same and then we're going to go to our java folder and then going to rename this uh, to, to calculation service application. And as you can see, um, we don't have some of the imports, so we need to do a Gradle rebuild, which will download all of the dependencies and then uh, we'll have them available. Okay, great. Um, let's see if we missed something. No, actually, um, we can define some server ports. So let's say port uh, is 2021 for our calculation service and for our user service uh, let's add um, something like this or even 2023 doesn't matter so some ports that we don't uh, so that we make sure that they start on a different one um, okay um, the next thing we want to do is we want to create um, our application um, configuration for the calculation service because there we need to add some configuration for our rest template so let me add this class uh, add the things that we need and then i'll explain what we have there and here we are so we have our configuration class important is that it's annotated with add configuration um, so the spring knows where to find it and then we create our rest template bin so this is what we're going to be using to execute some uh, http requests and uh, it's a, a spring bean and it also has this a load balancer uh, annotation i'll explain later how we're going to use this or i can just explain now we are going to be uh, just providing the service name so we are not going to be using uh, an address or something like that and um, so you don't have to worry about what where is your application running uh, which port it is or something like that you just provide its name and then this rest template will be able to find it using the uh, discovery server Okay, um, then the next thing we want to do is um, we want to um, add a controller here, which will be, we will be able to access and uh, fetch, some, uh, fetch some data from, from our service. So let's do that. And here we are, we have our calculation controller. Uh, basically, it's a REST controller with some request mapping. Uh, so we're going to slash API. Uh, and then we have our REST template. And with this uh, count user endpoint, we are fetching all of the users from the user service. So this is the important part. Um, and then uh, we are just counting those users. So that's the, the next thing that we have to do in our user service. We need to provide an endpoint, um, which we can call. So this one API users, um, which will then be able to return us a list of some strings. And as you can see here, um, I don't provide any IP address, any port or anything like that. I'm just using the service name. So this service name is the same one as is set in the application properties. So the same one that will be registered uh, with the server. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to manually call localhost um, and then the port 2021, because this is our calculation service where it's running and uh, slash API slash count users. And then this service, this microservice will call the other microservice or the user service and fetch the list of users. And then we are going to count them and return that count. So let's um, add a controller to our user service. So let's uh, create a new uh, class here. Let's call it uh, user controller and let's add um, a method which can return a list of users. Let me do that and then I'll show you what I have. And here we are. We have our uh, user controller uh, with uh, API slash users endpoint, which turns a list of users. 
So that's, that's basically everything we needed. Uh, let me then start our application. So start our server, start our calculation service and start our user service. Check if both of them are um, registered with the service discovery and then access uh, this count users endpoint and hopefully we get some nice results. So let's do that and um, then we'll have a look at it together. Um, okay, our calculation service fails to start because we have a final keyword. So let's uh, remove that. Um, so in the calculation uh, configuration class, remove the final from the rest template and then um, it should be able to start. Okay, all of our three services are running. Let's go to the uh, server dashboard and see what we have there. So now back at the service dashboard, uh, you can see that we have our calculation service and we have our user service. And now we're going to try to access that endpoint uh, which we configured. And here we are, we are at localhost 2021 slash API slash count users and you can see that we get count five, meaning that our calculation service is able to find our uh, user service based on its name. Uh, so we don't have to worry about uh, the um, address and the port like we do here. Uh, so we can access this, access this directly uh, from our application. So this is quite useful. Um, so uh, here we are accessing it manually, so we do have to know it. But if you were to access it from the application somewhere, you could do the same for the calculation service. So you wouldn't have to uh, make any calls um, like we are doing here. Hopefully, um, this was a, a clear tutorial on, on Eureka. Hopefully you understood how it works, how to set it up. Um, if you have any questions, if something is unclear, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below in the video and uh, all of the, the source code will be available on GitHub so you can uh, have a look at what we have there. And um, hopefully I see you in the next one.